TVR was created in 1947 by Trevor Wilkinson. The name, as some of you will already know, derives from Wilkinson's first name, Trevor, T-V-R, Trevor. See what I did there? The first hand-built car rolled off the production line in the same year, but it wasn't until 1957 that the first true production run began with a car that was dubbed Jomar. The reason for this perhaps unusual, some say ridiculous name, was that it was named after the children of the man who helped design and test the car, American Ray Seidel, who incidentally became the first TVR dealer. Like most companies, TVR have had good times and bad times, and as a result have had more owners than the Queen Vic. But despite its swap shop history, over the years, since 1970, TVR have remained loyal to its base here in Bristol Avenue, Blackpool. Now, you might think that the curvaceous lines of current TVRs like the Tuscan and Tamora are a fairly recent design direction for the company, but you'd be wrong. Believe it or not, TVR started out curvy. In fact, in 1971, TVR launched the M series. A lot of these models now are getting on, are getting on in the years. Uh, a lot of other chassis replaced, uh, which is quite a big job. So if you're going to buy one, you want to go for one that's had the majority of the work done. Uh, and maybe just the cosmetics left to finish. This 3000M was the top of the range. Power came from a 142 brake horsepower Ford 3 litre V6 engine. Performance was more than adequate with a top speed of 120 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 time of 7.4 seconds. You know, when the 25, 30 years old, a lot of the, the bodywork goes crazy. You get star cracking appearing on the edge of the, the bonnets and that. Uh, it costs a lot of money to rectify the bodywork, so you want to go for the best body that you can find. All the other pieces on the car, are easy, you can buy them easily, even the windscreen's off a console Granada, the door handles are off a Cortina, nothing is a major problem. Uh, the chassis, you can buy a new chassis for £1,000. Eventually, after 650 cars were built, the M-Series, like all its predecessors, finally succumbed to time and fashion. Despite still being relatively stylish, the M was soon to be replaced. It was decided in the late 1970s by the then owner Martin Lilly that TVR needed a car for the 80s. A car that said, I'm an individual, look at me. And they came up with this. The TVR Tasman, a car that's the Club Tropicana of cars, a car that comes with a dyed blonde mullet. The Tasman was an all-new car. Ex-Lotus designer Oliver Winterbottom designed the body, while the chassis and running gear was the work of another ex-Lotus engineer, Ian Jones. Production started in 1980 and ran until 1985. In total, there were five models ranging from the 101 brake horsepower convertible up to the 190 brake V8 convertible. In many ways, the Tasman summed up TVR at this time. They were a company trying to break away from their past and create truly distinctive cars, and this they achieved, all but coining the phrase the wedge based on the Tasman's shape. The only problem was it looked like a TR7 and had more borrowed parts than Steptoe's wheelbarrow. Having said all of that, if you want a car that's distinctive and pokey and great as a second-hand sports car, then the Tasman is probably the car for you. And don't worry about spare parts, the TVR Fan and Owners Club is more popular than Robbie Williams. So, who better to give us a guide on buying a used Tasman? Of course, it's Ian Royal. With some Tasman models being over 20 years old now, there's more than an average chance that the car has been restored. If this is the case, make sure you check trim fit, paint resprays, engine rebuilds and of course corrosion. But if you have to fork out any cash, are they expensive to repair? Well, it's not expensive to repair at all. Um, a lot of the work you can do yourself. Um, it's quite a user-friendly car, there's no tricky electronics to work with. Um, although it is injection, it's a mechanical fuel injection rather than the later electronic fuel injection. Um, you could, in, in theory, take it to any of your local garages, although I would probably recommend you don't do that. I take it to someone who does know a little bit more about TVRs and the, and the differences, uh, the, the, the things that make them a little bit different to your usual run-of-the-mill car. Although Tasmins are relatively old, there are still plenty of models around, many of which have been lovingly cared for. We've seen a 1982 28i convertible for £3,800 and a 1985 coupe for £3,700. I've had the car for 
just coming up to 12 months now. Um, I paid uh, just short of £3,000 for it. Quite apart from the price of the car, um, I think I just like the aggressive look of the car. And from certain angles, I think it looks absolutely marvellous. It looks brilliant, it really does. But before you buy anything, remember, as with any car, make sure that you check the vehicle history via receipts and the service book. And finally, get the car checked out by a specialist, as it will save you money in the long run.